Okay, as I teased in the last reaction video to Something Nostalgia Critic, another science fiction film that the Nostalgia Critic himself um, has reviewed that uh, came out in the late 1990s. And, you know, as I teased, never give up, never surrender. Yeah, it's obvious. Galaxy Quest, yes. Finally, the Nostalgia Critic has reviewed Galaxy Quest, and I've been looking forward to this. Um, and when I, you know, got the notification and, and saw what, uh, you know, f next film that Doug Walker, a.k.a. the Nostalgia Critic, has reviewed this time, and which being Galaxy Quest, I was like, oh, yeah, and obviously, you know... I knew, of course, I had to react to it, and I'm sure some of you would have figured that I would, and thus I am. You're watching it. I have no doubt that probably Doug will have a lot of positive things to say on Galaxy Quest, and, you know, I don't think he's... I don't think he's really ever talked about Galaxy Quest. Like, maybe if there was any mentionings of it or anything like that, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's nice to see that finally the Nostalgia Critic has reviewed something. Hey! something nostalgic in the 90s and for it being science fiction and you know galaxy quest you know what a great film this is like you know clearly because this being a homage slash a parody to star trek i think i got that right um and by using the word homage um but at the same time like this and another homage slash parody of Star Trek, that being the Orville, both of those, the Galaxy Quest and the Orville, they've become their own things, like, if you get what I'm saying, and that's nice to see. Not only are they homages and parodies to Star Trek, they are their own things and stuff like that, if you get what I'm saying, and yeah, that's a good thing. And, um, yeah, and I don't know, because I feel like wasn't Galaxy Quest one of those movies where it seemed like at first it could not have worked, but when it did come out, it did work. How audiences felt of it. You know, even some of the uh, Star Trek family members, what they've had to say about it. Like, from Patrick Stewart, Jonathan Frakes, Brent Spiner, Will Wheaton, I think George Decay as well. Yeah, just... Yeah, a lot of uh, Star Trek family members, they they gave a lot of good, positive things and compliments to Galaxy Quest, and yeah. You know, not to mention the history of the making of Galaxy Quest, like, Harold Ramis was at one point attached to it, um, and um, yeah, I think even, wasn't Ivan Reitman also attached to it? I don't know, but um, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting, like, knowing the history of this movie, and not to mention that documentary of Galaxy Quest, done by Screen Junkies, the, the YouTube channel that does uh, Honest Trailers videos, because I, I was kind of surprised to see that they did this documentary of Galaxy, of Galaxy Quest, which being Never Give Up, Never Surrender, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And uh, it's a pretty good documentary. Like, it's very fitting that there is a a documentary on Galaxy Quest. It makes total sense for there to be one. Um, and um, I don't know if Doug is gonna, if he's gonna bring it up or anything, like if he have, if he's gonna mention the documentary, I mean, I don't know, because of course I'm about to react to his, his review of it. So yeah. Also, uh, heads up, because I do have a, I do have a snack with me, because I'm having dessert after I have, I've had dinner, so anyways. And, you know, which, that's what I usually sometimes do in reaction videos. And, hey, it's kind of fun to to do that, don't you think? Like, I, I know I'm not the only one that has done this before. There have been sometimes, occasional times, where there can be some people, you know, when they're reacting to something, they could sometimes have a bite of something to eat, if you get what I'm saying. So, anyways, so without further ado... Let's see what the Nostalgia Critic has to say on good old Galaxy Quest. And by the way, because I already found out, because when getting the video queued up, there is no sponsor for this uh, Nostalgia Critic video. There was another one, another Nostalgia Critic video, I should say, that I reacted to not long ago where there was no sponsor advertisements and stuff like that. You know, this episode is brought to you by none of that. So that's uh, that's that's nice to see. And, you know... 
it doesn't hurt for, even for the Nostalgia Critic videos to once in a while, you know, occasionally not have anything, if you get what I'm saying. So, anyways, enough said. Let's get this video started. This Nostalgia Critic video, I should say. Nostalgia Critic's review on Galaxy Quest. Okay, here we go. Starting the video in three, two, one, play. Hey folks, we're starting YouTube memberships. If you want access to emojis, polls, behind the scene videos, and other perks, check out and see if you want to become a member. And come check us out at C2E2. Hope to see you there. That'd be nice to go to some of those conventions, you know. To a lot more conventions. And a quick intro, just very quick. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. In 1999, Galaxy Quest was released. The Star Trek parody was a modest hit among critics and audiences. Over time, it grew quite a following. Mm -hmm. With a documentary about it being made, fans voting it the seventh best Star Trek movie. <laughs> and even David Mann had declared there are four perfect movies. Godfather, A Place in the Sun, Dodsworth, and Galaxy Quest. Mm. That's right. Galaxy Quest and Godfather are on the same level for one of our most celebrated writers. <laughs> what am I missing? Oh. What are you missing? Huh. Make no mistake, I like this movie. I can't be the first one to call it Three Amigos Meet Star Trek, but I like Three <laughs> Amigos and I like Star Trek. Okay. Everything seemed to work fine. The cast is good. The jokes are decent. It had a gentle heart to it. But man, when you use Three the G amigos. word for film buffs, you can't back down from that. You have to mean it. Now, with that said, I think it's clear the idea is these films are perfect for what they are. Galaxy Quest didn't change cinema, but for many, it did yeah. its job as perfectly as could be done. And while, like I said, I do enjoy the film, I just don't see it on the same level as others do. Now, this isn't me trying to look down on anyone scoffing, Ugh, why can't you have the genius mind of someone who thought Morbius was okay? <laughs> I legit want to understand why this film has such a strong connection with people and why they hold it so close to their hearts, even all these years later. To be fair, I haven't seen the film since it came out, so maybe you'll understand now that time has passed why it's so unique. Mm. So 25 years later, let's look at why some diehard fans never gave up and never surrendered. This is an old relic talking about an old relic about old relics. This is Galaxy Quest. The film opens with an excerpt from the corny TV show Galaxy Quest. As mentioned before, clearly a parody of the original Star Trek and Next Generation series. I do love Weaver's wardrobe combining both the miniskirts of the original and Troy's out-of-uniform attire for no particular reason. <laughs> I'd appreciate it if you wore a standard uniform when you're on duty. Oh, my God! Well, there you are. Yeah. As the credits roll, we see this is a clip at a convention where the actors from the show are becoming tired of being known only for this series, including Gwen, played by Sigourney Weaver, and Alexander, played by Alan Rickman. The only one who seems to enjoy it is Jason, played by Tim Allen respects the attention he gets, but not the people giving it, as he constantly shows up late. <laughs> they really do love him. Yeah, almost as much as he loves himself. Well, I think this is way too harsh and obvious commentary on Walter Koenig. We all know about his ego, but the man's a legend. <laughs> oh my god, the voice of Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks. In the Queen's certain limit, More than just that. that B for Gamma override, the Come on. sequence clearly indicated that, that B is independent of the guidance matrix. As someone who's now been on the other side of that table, I can vouch we remember every single solitary detail about what we filmed. And if we say we don't, it's because we personally hate you. <laughs> He's approached by what he thinks are more fans, led by Mathisar, played by Enrico Calatoni, who claim they're Thermians from another galaxy who needs the team's help. We are Thermians from the Clatoon Nebula. And we need your help. No, that voice is either going to do it for you or it's not. <laughs> when I first saw it, it got on my nerves, but looking back, it does sound like an alien translator trying to emulate our way of speaking with a unique accent we've never heard before. It's an accent that's hard to describe, too. The best description I've heard is melodic yet monotone. Please, Commander, you are our last hope. It's like if Stephen Hawking's <laughs> voice box was trying to sing. It kind of grew on me. Jason constantly Same. tries to hit on Gwen, who was an old fling, but now wants nothing to do with it. And I never put together that while he's constantly surrounded by her, he can never actually get the real thing. It's a subtle touch. Up until the end. <coughs> First big error in the movie, if you're a guest at a con, you never use the urinals. You don't <laughs> even look over there, man. Every interaction would be... Keep your eye on the road, Dick. <laughs> Two kids bad-mouthing him and calling him a has-been, he instantly gets depressed. 
There is no quantum yep. flux. There's no auxiliary. There's no goddamn shit. Years of academy training wasted. Perfect. This scene would be a little funnier if he just said, There's no auxiliary. There's no what? God. You got it? And yes, I will admit that is one of the problems I have with the movie. I feel like it could go meaner. In fact, that oh. was the original idea. The film was supposed to be much darker and mean spirited, even earning an R rating at first. You can still see mm. snippets of that version left behind here and there. Oh, yeah. Well, screw that. Well, screw that. <laughs> Yes, Doug. That ain't what you said. No. I love Star Trek. Well, I F that. When it comes to mocking it, I love the mindset the more cynical the better. Rip it apart. Show why this utopian future doesn't make sense. Point out the ethical inconsistencies. Make fun of how often this perfect world building doesn't follow its own rules. Huh. And doing so doesn't mean you hate Star Trek. Quite the opposite. It means it struck a chord with you that you hold dear and love to talk about. And you love it even when you hate it. I personally find all that more interesting. But that's not what this film is trying to be, and I should accept that. Hmm. This movie lightly mocks the Star Trek world and the people who made it. In fact, if you've never heard of Star Trek, you could watch this film and still enjoy it. It's very clever that way. But most audiences yeah. know what they're doing. Hell, it was voted the seventh best Star Trek movie. And I think it's trying to be a loving homage that keeps the same optimism and hope as the series. Well, also, I use the word too a lot. Jab at the fans and actors. I just think comedy's funnier when you jab a little harder. But I should judge it on what it is and not what I want it to be. With that said, the film does want to balance it with a fair amount of drama too. Yeah. And all the actors very smartly play it straight. Despite him being a little sleazy, you do sympathize with Jason and his obsession over the glory days of his career. He gets so depressed he drinks his Glen Leather with ice, buddy. You don't know what you're doing. Hmm. His alien friends from before drop by and he thinks they're there to take him to another gig. Sir, I am Lank. Please let me know if you have any requirements. Weapons, documents, personnel. Dwight, you ignorant slut! Jason sleeps <laughs> as they take him to the space station. He the office is all yeah. set. Again, maybe a hint of the R-rated version sneaks in here and there. Terrace is the bad guy, right? Oh, yes, sir. He's a very bad man. Captured our females for his mm. own demented purposes. Hey, come on. This is perverted Star Trek, not perverted Star Wars. <laughs> on their enemy thinking it's all fake but when they send him back home that's when he realizes he's in the real deal yep and he really wakes up because you know this is also where you might realize while it is a parody of star trek it's not bit for bit yeah. this way of transporting people has a beaming feel but it is uniquely its own yeah and some of the tropes they mock are not directly from star trek but feel like they could be systems register functional all systems are working, Commander. Like, Gwen just repeating what the computer says isn't exactly the same as Troy saying what a person is feeling or Uhura being the interpreter, but it's in the same vein. You could also argue it's similar to taking all the techno babble and reducing it down to something simple. New source of brilliant must be secured. We need another one. Like putting too much air in a balloon! Part of the reason why people might gravitate towards this movie is that it does an okay job building a world that tips their hat to Star Trek, but still has its own rules and details. Yeah. It's in style of the Omega Thirteen. After he bumps into a fan from earlier mixing up their communicators, Brandon. he tries to tell the team about what he experienced, along with the Thermians asking him to return. Do you really think he was talking about? She's a termite. <laughs> someone who hates this character so much it is weird he never takes off that makeup no he does Actually, not i kind of like that as if he's so used to it he forgets he even has it on like the character is a part of him whether he likes it or not similar to what leonard nimoy went through with spock oh yeah absolutely <laughs> transported to the space station including an old extra named guy played by sam rockwell and you know playing showing the clip of him screaming <laughs> wait 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 i'm not used to this Creatures that are actually there? Clearly we need CG to flatten and blurry it up. And quips about holes. Yeah, you remember holes? Everybody was quoting holes. <laughs> that movie was a hole. <laughs> our most sincere apologies. Yeah. These are actually the Thermians when not in human We form. forgot about our appearance generators. Friend, played by Tony Shalhoub. That was a hell of a thing. And like most Tony Shalhoub characters, I don't know why he is the way he is. I just love that he is. Oh, yeah. Since we first received... Because he's Tony Shalhoub. ...historical documents. You've been watching the show? Historical documents. No, it's not like sci-fi fans at all. It isn't historical documents. Did you get to Tommy? biblical text. They think it's so real, they even recreated the ship. And it will say everybody's motivations feel right as to why they... Maybe I missed it, I don't know. 
Jason was feeling like a nobody, but clearly loves the attention of a hero. Alexander can give the performance of a lifetime literally fooling people. Tommy can grow up to finally do his part as a man. Fred is clearly just along for the ride. Guy is finally going to be a major part of the story and not just an extra that dies. And mm -hmm. Fred is there too. Okay, five out of six ain't bad. Take us out. Excuse me? They designed those controls after watching you. They're also allowed to say, shut up, Tommy, at any point. <laughs> After a literal shaky start, the ship is off and they find out their enemy wants a device called the Omega-13. The Thermian the scraping. was killed in a horrific way, trying to get information about it, which scares a lot of the crew away. Yep. You can have any mercy within you, please. Let me die. You shall die! Again, I think I would love the R-rated version of this. Like, maybe an eyeball and whatever Thermian private device <laughs> look like splattered on the screen would have made the runoff funnier. Even the G-rated Bugs Life had a drawing of the horrors that yes. they encountered. Come on, you can push it a little further. <laughs> the presence is required on the command deck. But not too far. To leave, Sarah shows up, though, making it impossible for them to escape. How you doing? Much better than my lieutenant. <laughs> okay, some of your R rating is shining through. I respect that. Well. They force muck up the negotiations, and Sarah ends up firing on them. They lose them in a minefield, but the ship and crew have taken major damage. I take him to a medical quarters. Thanks, Madison. <laughs> Poor Tommy. Still like him better than Wesley. <laughs> okay, Doug. Hey, folks. And, okay. Playing Final Fantasy yeah, and again, no sponsor for this Twitch. one, so. I've never played a Final Fantasy game before, so, so let's just play. To see like. Hope to see you there. Okay. Our heroes try to confess they're not the characters from TV, but the Thermians don't seem to follow, leading to maybe the funniest line in the film. Surely you don't think that Gilligan's Island is a... Those poor people. <laughs> Almost as sad as that political documentary. But now the sitcom about the two old guys who can't talk running things? That was hilarious. <laughs> they find a planet that might contain energy to fuel their ship, so they head on down there to see what they can find. They throw some creatures at first in queue, but later are... No. Uh-huh. <laughs> They get the energy Perfect. source, but Jason is accidentally left behind as he fights with Alexander. I never thought of that because of the killer rabbit. That's what those actors want to do to each other sometimes. <laughs> Rickman and Alan came from very different backgrounds, and Rickman was often dismissive of Alan's more laid-back attitude against his constant prepping. The two did quickly become friends, but I guess it wouldn't be a Star Trek-type production without somebody shouting, that actor's an asshole. We're going to use the digital yeah. conveyor. It has never been successfully tested. What did he say? Hold, please. You know, I think I figured out the major problem with the movie. It is likable, but I don't laugh much at it. Oh? And again, I think that might be an issue with the editing. Jokes are paced weirdly. Like, look at these two jokes back to back. Wow. All right. It's over as about you, isn't it? Okay, right? Except that's how I edit. Well, I don't see anything. This is how they played I, in the movie. I don't see anything wrong with them. Um. See what I mean? Isn't the timing on those a little off? Again, though, that's probably due to the film very quickly being slashed down to a PG. I doubt this was how it was meant to be originally. And man, when he has to battle this rock creature, I really wish he could say something better than... Oh, man. You know, they have translators in this. Can't they translate what the R-rated version would have been? Maybe, ironically, it would translate out to... <laughs> me. <laughs> they eventually get the transporter working, but it looks like Saris has taken over. Yep. At every turn, you demonstrate the necessity for your... Extermination. extermination. Yeah, and I'll just say it. Saris is a really boring film. Oh, come on. Guns are usually great, and even when they're I thought he was good. Deep, they're still pretty entertaining. But aside from the impressive effects on this guy, he's pretty dull. I either need him to be really funny or really scary. And while he does a bunch of violent stuff, he sounds like the voice you give a bad guy when you're reading a story to your kids. Do you think I'm a fool? The commander does not know every bolt, every weld in his ship. And then the big bad wolf said, All the better to eat you with, my dear. I'm wrong. <laughs> Okay, that's funny. Course, we need our liar reveal third act where the truth comes out and nothing funny happens and everyone acts really mopey. Though to Enrico's credit, his heartbreak is perfectly harsh. We don't have a mm -hmm. ship. And there it is. And that ship is that big. Inside, I've seen many rooms. 
Next you'll tell me the tragedy of Alf never took place. <laughs> no, really, have you seen that finale? It is dark. Yeah, it is. They shine the space when they stage a fight to fake out the guards. Yep. Well, I'm a murderer. Cool. Hmm. I contact the fan from earlier and tell him what every diehard fan wants to hear. Everything he obsessed over is real. I understand completely that it's just a TV yeah. show. It's all real. Oh my god, I knew it. I knew, I knew it. it. I knew, I knew it. it. Now I just have to convince people that Pizzagate was real and... Yeah, we gotta go. <laughs> about the Omega-13 and discover it can rearrange matter 13 seconds in the past. Yeah, I'm sure we'll never hear from that again. Anyway, Alexander teams up with his biggest fan mm. to free the others. And I will admit, this death really cracks me up. It cracks you up? I'm, I'm shot. What, because of that? Just like an episode... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was funny. He hates to say from the show, and by God, he says it like he's telling his dying son he loves him for the first time. Yeah, he really means it when he tells that to him. Even what the documentary said about that. If that means, but it's gonna make me cry. Oh yeah. This sends him into a vengeful rage as he takes out the guards and the crew returns to the bridge. They bring some of the magnetic mines with them and take out Sarah's ship. Oh, by the way. Yeah. But Sarah sneaks aboard and kills. Doug. Her. Doug. I think they said a man ago does time travel is gonna do time travel. Listen, before the black road. Of course, only the person that pushes it remembers what happened. That's detailed Omega-13 logic we just learned about. Yeah, this is basically a cartoon. A perfect cartoon. I don't know. <laughs> there she is, too big to enter the atmosphere. They say their goodbyes we need to separate or we will die. On Earth. Where else? At the convention. Of course. Pointless return number two! <laughs> yeah, I could have cut him returning both times and not really miss anything, but the fans seem to like it. The journey continues. And you know, maybe that's the secret. It's a Star Trek movie for fans that's not a Star Trek movie for fans. I still don't see it as a perfect film, as I feel like the jokes have good ideas, but rarely get that many laughs out of me. A lot of that is due to the awkward timing and editing that was probably a rush job due to quickly trying to make it family friendly. Mm. But taking that out of it, which yes, is a lot to ignore for a comedy, there is an optimistic kindness about it. Now, that doesn't mean it's always happy and upbeat. If anything, true optimism is aware of the dangers and chooses to still be positive. And that's what this film presents. Mm. It's not as dark as I would like it, but it does incorporate a lot of messy deaths and threats that gives it, okay, a soft edge, but still an edge. I was talking about how I wanted the film to be a little meaner to the franchise and sci-fi and fandoms and so forth, but mm. honestly, looking back, it is kind of refreshing that it doesn't. There's enough infighting and snobbery and pissed off people in these fandoms, so it is kind of nice seeing a film where the fans are weird, but helpful. The heroes are aggravated, but find the love for what they inspired. Mm -hmm. And their series is flawed, but still brings joy in a meaningful way. For as much as we get lost in the annoyance of fandom, this film does celebrate why many of us become fans to begin with. And appropriately enough, create new fans with this film. Like I said, I think it's far from perfect, but the characters all have arcs, the world is inventive, and the yes. love for what it's satirizing is felt in every frame. It's just so happy in what it is that I can't help but feel happy for what it is, too. Yeah. Fair enough. What I'm you, gonna stop what you said. Guy. Remember, it's a you don't have to. See you next time, Doug. <laughs> Maybe you, sh you probably should have done Guy Scream. And all this month but yeah, that's okay. And the charity shout-out, as always. Okay. Wow. So... That was the Nostalgia Critics review of Galaxy Quest. I'll be honest, not what I was expecting at first. I mean, well, how was I supposed to know what he was going to say about Galaxy Quest? It's true. Um, but overall, because now that I've seen it, watched it, slash reacted to it, and what he has to, what he said about Galaxy Quest... I can understand. I can understand. Besides, like, first off, yeah, the whole thing of uh, them uh, changing it for it to be a, you know, family-friendly film. And, you know, for this movie, I think it it does have a PG-13 rating, does it? Either that or PG. I mean, yeah, because 
had the movie almost gotten an, an, an R rating because, you know, they had to take out some of the dark, you know, very dark stuff and, you know, some swearing. Like, most notably, of course, you know, you can painfully see, and if you look closely, Sigourney Weaver, you know, because you hear her saying, well, screw that, when really she was saying, well, F that. Also, Tommy, at the beginning of the film, because if you remember one part, because, you know, you could see Tommy saying, you know, he says to uh, Jason, you are so full of it, man, full of it. Well, that's not what he said. He said, you are so full of shit, man. <laughs> that's what it was. Um, and... Yeah, I think I, I think it's fine for what they for what they had to do because taking out some of the stuff and you know for it be becoming a family friendly film and you know with uh with some of the dialogue change like just you know the swearing like I think uh, with Tommy saying you are so full of it it seem it it, seem, it works I think to me um, and well and you know. <laughs> Gwen saying, well, screw that. Especially how she says it. It's funny, and it works, in my opinion. Um, I strongly disagree. Okay, here's one thing that pops in my head that I can think of very much, I can think very much on what Doug said, and I strongly disagree on. Saris. I disagree on Saris. He, to me, he's not boring. To me, he's a really good, really cool and good villain. Just... The performance, um, what's some face who who played uh, Saris and being in that practical makeup and in that suit, the performance given to Saris, fantastic, and you know the voice, just everything. And Saris had some pretty good dialogue. Like I can think of most no notably, you know, deliver the device to me, or I will destroy your ship, and just that cybernetic like hand he has part of it being cybernetic and um even like when he f gets pissed off and such those things that stick out like what the heck are they supposed to be i forget i mean obviously because they they stick out like whenever i guess he gets furious they even like because you know from do you think i'm a four find them i just i just love that that's so good and you know into the field and that's so good yeah, and a lot of other stuff that um, Doug didn't really talk about, like, yeah, because on the planet, we're getting another, um, you know, um, core, uh, core, power core and such, you know, for the ship, um, and those little, like, baby aliens, which turn out to be, like, little devils, like, you know, they're, they're scary, and cannibals, whatever, and, um, and then because, uh, Jason left behind because he sacrifices himself and, you know, facing, a f coming face to face with Gordnick, Gordnick, I think if I'm saying that right, thinking it's, they think it's the pig lizard, but it's not because it, you know, it, it turns out to be, Gordnick turns out to be a rock monster. And, um, yeah, the pig lizard sequence and when it gets transported, and <laughs> turned inside out. Doug, yeah, because Doug didn't touch upon that. That was so funny. And one of the one of the Thermians is it Tech? Am I saying the name right? You know, you know. But the animal is inside out, and when it explodes, you know, and it exploded. <laughs> that was that was good. And um, yeah, and, all, and yeah, the whole rock monster, which um, I'm pretty sure because. Um, I think, yeah, because the whole rock monster in Galaxy Quest, I think, yeah, that is a nod to, I'm pretty sure, because obviously those who worked on Galaxy Quest, they would have known about this, I'm pretty sure. Because in Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, um, there was supposed to be a rock monster that Captain Kirk would come face to face with when running away and escaping from uh, the god imposter, the god of Shakari. Shakari, I need to say it. In, I need to say it as Shakari because Shakari was uh, named after Sean Connery, by the way. In fact, Sean Connery was considered to be in Star Trek V as Cybok, but that, of course, didn't happen. Um, and um, you know, I don't think I think it's nice that they kept that that word in Shakari because it sound sounds like a fitting name, you know, for like a planet or whatever. Just you know, um, in this case, you know, the god of Shakari, so. Um, so again, Kirk was supposed to come face to face with a rock monster, and originally it was supposed to be, I think, ten rock monsters? Then it was reduced to five, 
10 monsters, then five rock monsters because of the budget. And then they only, by the end, they only just had one. And the practical rock monster suit that was supposed to be, the rock monster that was supposed to, to be in Star Trek V didn't end up being in the film at all because it looked terrible, apparently. It looked terrible. Um, I mean, if only the practical suit of, of the rock monster looked much better, I mean... Golly, because I tell you, Star Trek V, I mean, that's another story, because, you know, Star Trek V having a messy production, it was just in a total wreck. It was having bad luck from the start, even like I'm sure Shatner and the others, they knew that this was most likely not going to turn out good, which of course it didn't, so, you know. But I'm sure, because no doubt about it, there are those, including me and my dad, that, yeah, think Star Trek V is okay. Not the best, but still, it could be fun to watch. So, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and I, I was, I was wondering if maybe he would or not, uh, Nostalgia Critic mentioning, and he did, mentioning, uh, the documentary a couple of times. That was nice to see. And, um, yeah, a bunch of other stuff that he had to say. Well, you know, there are a couple of other things that, what he said about Galaxy Quest that I, I would disagree with, but, you know, it's nice that he, he gave, this film, a po you know, he gave a lot of positive things to say about it, you know what I'm saying, and how, you know, he does enjoy it. I mean, who wouldn't enjoy Galaxy Quest, really? I tell you, Galaxy Quest is one of those movies that, you know, you just, you can't help but sit down and watch to. And actually, because a, a couple of days ago before I, you know, recorded this reaction video, I couldn't help but watch it because I, I kind of got into a Galaxy Quest mood, and this was right after I saw that, well, one of uh, Nostalgia Critic's new videos, which being this. So, yeah. And, yeah, overall, I'm I'm glad to see that he has, he finally got around to reviewing slash talking about this movie and with what he had to say and, um, you know, for me to react to it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Overall, um, the Nostalgia Critic's review of Galaxy Quest, not bad, not bad. It's understandable what he had to say and, um, you know, things that, you know, that he talked about that, you know, some that I disagree with and that I, I agree with, you know. So, yeah, again, a pretty good review on Galaxy Quest. Not bad, critic. Not bad. So what about you guys? What did you think of the Nostalgia Critic video itself of his review of Galaxy Quest? Um, you know, anything that you agree and disagree with, with what he had to say, and, you know, do any of you enjoy Galaxy Quest? Again, how could you not enjoy a film like Galaxy Quest? Just saying. And with what I've had to say about, you know, the video itself, and yeah, what did you think of my reaction? Leave comments and give this reaction video a like as always. And so, with all that being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction to the Nostalgia Critic video of his review of Galaxy Quest. More reaction videos are on the way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward, and I'll see you guys in the next video slash reaction. Take care, peace out, and never give up, never surrender.